Hey, it's Kyle from Living in the San Fernando Valley. As a companion piece to today's video, I'm including a link to my free first time home seller's guide. So just click the link below in the description so you can get your free guide and follow along. I'm hearing that a lot of property owners in the Valley are feeling like they may have missed the boat when it comes to listing their property. Maybe you're hearing that the market has cooled recently. And with last year being such a great time to sell a home, especially in the spring of 2022, you might be feeling like if you haven't put your property on the market by now, you may have missed the opportunity to take advantage of a good seller market. I'm here to tell you that that doesn't need to be the case, but there are some things that you should know. So if you live in the San Fernando Valley or the surrounding Los Angeles areas and you're considering selling your home in 2023, this is the video for you. And if you're considering purchasing a home, you might want to stick around to find out what's going to be important on the seller side of things. So hopefully this will be a great video for everybody. Let's get to it. Again, I'm Kyle Scott, I'm an agent with eXp Realty, and I help homeowners and investors buy and sell properties in the San Fernando Valley and the surrounding Los Angeles areas. If you're looking to move to, from, or within the Valley, give me a call. Helping people find the perfect buyer for their Valley home or helping people find the perfect home in the Valley is one of my passions. So whether you're thinking about buying or selling a home in nine days or 90 days, call me, text me, email me, set up a Zoom with me. I'd love to use my local knowledge to make that process nice and smooth for you. And as always, be sure to like this video so more people see it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the cool stuff coming your way. So first off, if you're hesitant about selling your home because you've heard that the market has cooled recently, here's the thing I have to tell you. You haven't missed your window. Just because homes aren't being snatched off the market the day after listing them like they were a year ago, doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of willing and able buyers that are gonna be happy to pay fair price for your home. But I think the difference now is that buyers are sensing that homes are sitting for longer and they're gaining more leverage when it comes to asking for concessions. So is it still a good market to sell in? Yes, but you may need to think about things a little differently. Point number one, location, location, location. As I referenced in my video, The San Fernando Valley Explained, the collective suburbs that make up the San Fernando Valley are in their own ways, many markets. Quick reminder, Los Angeles isn't a small city. We're the largest city in California, and with 4 million residents, we're the most populous city in the nation behind New York City. In 2020, there were an estimated 1.4 million residential units within the city limits. So when you Google the Los Angeles real estate market, what you're actually seeing are some really broad assessments of the market in Los Angeles. However, in a mega city like Los Angeles, certain areas have their own market trends. Some areas are much more seller's markets, while some areas are a more balanced market or even heading towards a buyer's market. The thing to remember when selling your home in the San Fernando Valley is that you should be looking at local trends as well as the broader trends in the greater area. Now, any realtor can do this for you. That's our job. But a local realtor with more active knowledge of your local area, familiarity with other listings near you, and who can help you interpret those trends and then communicate them to buyers is going to be key to selling your home at the right rate. Now, I am a local realtor and I'd love to help you through this. So call me if you have any questions. But whether you use me or not, this is still something that you should be considering when it comes to pricing your home. That takes us to point number two, price your home at market value. For those of you who have been following this passively, it's important to understand the journey that the mortgage rates have taken over the past year. Deep in the pandemic, mortgage rates were as low as 2.65%. Emergency actions by the Federal Reserve kept those rates low. But in 2022, with inflation running ultra hot, mortgage interest rates surged to their highest level since 2002. Now, since November, those rates have cooled down a bit. But if that chart spooked you out, imagine what a buyer's thinking. This is all to say that in 2023, buyers, rightfully so, are much more cautious about their budgets. So if you want to attract potential buyers to your home, considering what's important to buyers and then pricing your home to reflect that to determine the best fair market value for your home is essential. Remember, market value is not what you think your home should sell for. Market value is what your home actually sells for. And that figure is the one that's agreed upon by you and the buyer. So consider buyers when pricing your home. Work with a realtor to get a sense of what your home will sell for in this market and be realistic about it. That is what's going to make you super successful in this process. Point number three, be willing to negotiate. As I said before, at the peak of the pandemic, sellers had all the leverage. With such a competitive seller's market, sellers had the luxury of putting up homes on their time frame, receiving multiple offers very quickly, and then they had the further luxury of accepting offers with the least amount of contingencies. I've heard of buyers who bid way over asking price and still lost because the other offers had less contingencies, or they were more willing to take the property with less repairs, or the other offers didn't ask for an inspection. 
but today's buyers find that they have more options. Now that properties aren't exactly flying off the shelves, sellers should hear these things and still realize that they're going to come out ahead with a great deal. Buyers more and more will be requesting repairs, inspections, help with closing costs, or even assistance with financing. You'll want to consider these. And again, a local realtor can help you navigate these conversations and still make you feel like you're coming out with a win. Number four, think about your first impression on buyers. In other words, make your home more attractive. If you're using a realtor to sell your home, they're going to impress upon you the importance of making sure that your home shows well. Sometimes this takes work. Sometimes if you're still living in the home while you're trying to do this, you may actually have to pick up a lot of that work. But it's worth it to make your home stand out in the market. When determining pricing for your home, you're going to look at like properties in the area, essentially your competition. Now, because the Valley is a collection of neighborhoods that share a lot of the same points of interests, major streets, industry, your home needs to stand out not only as the nicest home of the street, but as one of the nicer homes in your end of the valley. So stand out. Do great home prep. Make sure your agents get you great photo and video and make sure they feature it online. Maybe if they have a channel about the San Fernando Valley. Number five, consider cash sales. The fantastic thing about going to cash buyers is that you don't have to worry about contingencies. You won't have to let your property sit for longer than you want. The funding is guaranteed and you can close in as little as nine days. Now I know what you're thinking. A cash buyer is going to lowball me. Sure. Okay. A cash buyer wants to buy low because they're going to buy low. They're going to flip it and they're going to sell it for high or they're going to buy it, hold it, rent it out, and wait for the property to appreciate in value. But depending on your circumstances and the condition of the property, you may come out ahead. A lot of cash buyers will offer 70 to 80% of the renovated value of your home. So if your home has a lot of deferred maintenance, it's going to require you to pay a lot out of pocket, and then you're going to have to do those repairs while you're still living in the home, then a fair market cash offer for the value of your home in its current condition may not sound so bad. You can avoid showings, you can avoid negotiations, you can avoid repairs, you can sell quickly and you can avoid five to six percent commissions. Now if you are interested in discussing a cash offer, call me. I actually have a great system for going after cash buyers. And your last tip for selling your home quickly in the San Fernando Valley, number six, stay up to date on real estate news. The best way to do that, hit up your local realtor and ask them to send you a monthly or even a weekly report of your market. Or you can follow your favorite YouTube channel about the San Fernando Valley and watch for updates. So remember, when selling your home in the San Fernando Valley in 2023, price it accurately and fairly. Negotiate when reasonable and appropriate. Do everything you can to put your home's best foot forward. Be open to cash buyers. Stay educated and informed. And most importantly, work with a local realtor who knows the nuances of your market. Following these tips will cause you to be successful in selling your home in any market, I guarantee it. Thanks for joining me. Again, this is Kyle from Living in the San Fernando Valley. I'd love to talk to you. Be sure to grab your free first time home seller's guide in the description below. If you found this video helpful, like it so that other people can see it and be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the cool and essential news coming your way from Living in the San Fernando Valley.